Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Top 5 Friday. Today's video is, I completely stole this idea off of That's What She Read here on YouTube. You can also follow her on Twitter, uh, name Stephanie, uh, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Goodreads. I will link all of, I'll link you guys to her channel right there. So we're going to wait a second until that disappears, and then we're going to continue on with the book. Anywho, with the list, I should say. So the uh, the point of her list was her her biggest disappointments. I just was I was I'm not sure if hers. I watched the I watched her video, but I'm still not sure if those were recent disappointments or if there's like disappointments of all time. If we were going to go with disappointments of all time, this list would be massive. Um, so I decided to go with uh, the last five years, roughly, um, of disappointments. And two of them were released in the last year. I think this one was, yeah, I think it was the last year. I might be wrong. Let me know down there in the comments if, if I'm wrong. Actually, it's been over a year since I ordered the limited edition of one of these. So, yeah, it's been over a year. Never mind. I so, we're going to start off with the absolutely massive, boring tome that is The Bone Tree by Greg Isles. Man, was I disappointed with this. Uh, I finished it. But I had to get the audiobook through the library because I wasn't about to buy it again. I unfortunately own both the paperback and the hardcover um, edition of this book because I love the first four books in the series so much. And unfortunately this one was such a letdown. There is a lot of JFK subplot and it doesn't even happen in the 60s. Uh, it, it, the JFK assassination subplot. And, the, and he just went on and on with the storyline I didn't care about at all. Um, I wanted to know about his dad, um, and from what I understand is he had a car accident before he before he published uh, Natchez Burning, which was the fourth book in this series, and he lost his leg and had a traumatic experience, of course. Um, losing a leg, you, losing any part of your body is traumatic. Just a car accident can be traumatic. But uh, he had written a book called Unwritten Laws, um, something like that. In fact, it's still on Goodreads if you want to go check it out. But he was going to release it as one book. When he got back, he decided to cut it up and make it three long books. So Natchez Burning, uh, The Bone Tree, and then Mississippi Blood were, uh, were the, what those books became. And then I got to the last book, Mississippi Blood. This one is a disappointment because the series went in a whole new direction I didn't care about. But then in the last book, I didn't even finish the last book because he says at some point um, in the narrative, not in dialogue, but in the narrative that black people smell funny. And I finally decided to give it up. I don't know what he was getting at. In fact, he knew what he said was weird because he goes on to try and, I guess, uh, defend that point of view um, by saying, oh, it's not bad, it's just different. Which is very odd to me. I just finally gave up with it because I, I just don't care to read about that. Especially not if that's how the protagonist of the series feels. It's written in first person, so... Anywho. Um, so it's, if that protagonist feels that way, I just don't care to read about it. Um, you might be different. Have fun with that. Uh, next up is Beautiful You by Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, I was expecting something amazing with this. Uh, I read that Chuck was going after the Fifty Shades of Grey crowd. Um, and... I guess he went after him. He went. The, I mean, he he put all barrels into it. This just book was just no fun to read. And then in the very end, he parodied himself. I mean, I I understand sometimes that authors feel the need to not take themselves seriously. I'm the same way. But when the entire ending of your book is a joke, I just I just can't I just can't gel with it. I don't know. That, uh, Joe Hill did the same thing with uh, what was it? Rain, I think, in Strange Weather. He pretty much said, hey, the whole thing is a joke. So uh, then, then the ending was the only part that really felt like a joke to me. Uh, the rest of it seemed like it was trying to be serious, but uh, yeah, he just never pulled it off, so he decided to make a joke out of it. I don't know. And the third, number three on my disappointment list, is The Vegetarian by Han, Han Kang. I'm not sure. Um, this lady is a tremendous author. Her, uh, I guess it's a novel... A uh, human, uh, human's being, or something like that, is a terrific, terrific book. I'm just gonna look in here and see if they, they tell you, uh, what it comes. It came after this one, so I don't guess so. No, they're not. They don't. Um, but the book that she released, it, the translation she released in America after this one, is fantastic. This one, 
I don't know what happened. There is so much um, that is left to the imagination that my, the comment section on my review of this book turned into a clusterfuck. No other way I could... Women coming on telling me that I was wrong, that I was right. Uh, guys coming on telling me I was wrong and I was right. So many people read so many different things into this book. Um, I had people agreeing with me, disagreeing with me, some people on the fence, whatever. Um, the, the inside of the jacket says that it's supposed to be um, an allegory for uh, modern day Korea. Um, and then you come to find out that she, in a interview with her, she says it's not supposed to be that. So I don't even know that she knew what she was writing about. Um, <laughs> but I, th what I'm getting at is there's a, there are a lot of um, women who enjoyed the book, what I've been told, is because it speaks to the hidden violence and hatred inside of a woman. Anyway, just go read the... I will link you to the comment section of my review for this book, and you can read it for yourself. Um, I'm, I'm not one of the type of person to delete comments, so I just leave it leave it open. Now, on Goodreads, I do have my comments shut off unless we are friends, um, and that's just to keep the trolls down. So, if you want to comment on it, just send me a uh, friend request, and uh, put in the friend request, Hey, I'm a fan of YouTube, YouTube videos, or I watch your YouTube videos, whatever, and I want to comment on your stuff, I'll let you in. Alright, next up, but needless to say, the book started out great. Going back to the vegetarian real quick, the book started out great. Um, I would highly recommend the first third of the book, because the book's been broken up into three different uh, parts. Highly recommend that. But after that, it becomes a conf confusing cluster. Fuck. <laughs> Demonetize! Next up, if you guys have been a recent uh, fan of the channel, or however long you know, I have already reviewed this, but Never World Wake. I waited five, between five and seven years for this. I can't remember how long. After reading Night Film, this thing was a disaster. Um, I cannot think, still to this day, I cannot think of one positive thing to say about this book. Not even the writing was very good. Um, nothing about this uh, book did anything for me. And a lot of people going, yeah, it's, it's YA, it's not meant for you. I have read and enjoyed YA. In fact, Andrew Smith is one of my favorite authors of all time. He's got a new book coming out, by the way. Um, and he, he doesn't write down to the people that he's writing to. This does, and other YA I've read talks down. I would, I would much rather my children read Stephen King than any of the YA that's being published nowadays because it, it's just the language is so dumbed down as if they're not going to understand um, what you're saying unless you say it in the most simplistic language. Last but not least, if you didn't see this coming, you don't know me very well. Sleeping Beauties by the one, the only, Stephen King. Or if you think like I think, Owen King. I am. I can almost promise you, Owen King wrote the majority of this book. It lacks all the passion um, and storytelling ability of Stephen King. The only thing that st says Stephen King about this book is the feeling that the entire plot and cast is just rehashed and reused from under the dome. So yeah, this was my most disappointing recent book. I cannot look back on any of these other ones and feel more disappointed than I was with this one. Not even having read and enjoyed the first four Pen Cage books by, Gren by Greg Isles, can I look back and say, oh, well I was more disappointed in that than I was in this one. This one broke my heart because I really love Stephen King and I love Owen King by themselves. And it just feels like a 700, 800 page novel that was completely and utterly phoned in. And they got lost in their message and forgot to entertain people. So that's my list. I hope that you will definitely go check out Stephanie's video over on That's What She Read. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.